Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of our coaster and yeah we are back in the hamburger layout kind of coaster which um, as you can tell from the title has changed now to the grindy glue. I <laughs> I don't really know if that's a catchy title for it but I, I wanted to come up with an, an, a better name than just hamburger because I, as I said last time it was just kind of a working title because I I definitely wanted to have a name that kind of explained what this idea is about and yeah that said I think it worked out well for the first episode but I didn't want to stick with that name because actually it's not a hamburger and it's also not hamburger styled or not hamburger colored so it's um, I think the the only thing is it's exactly the same way it's tasty as a hamburger but apart from that it's nothing major to do, it has got nothing major to do with a hamburger, so I thought of changing the name and I, I wanted to have kind of, you know, this little, how's it called in English? Is it an anagram um, with the different, if you have the same letter at the beginning of a uh, word, uh, I think it's an anagram, right? I'm, I'm not too sure about that right now, but, um, so I decided to go with the grindy glue. But yeah, that should be it about the name, because this episode is, um, for me at least, really, in, really, really interesting. Uh, because I wanted to talk a little bit about the architecture of the station which you are going to build in this episode. And you have already seen kind of the final result in the thumbnail. If you have taken a closer look to it, you may, may have been able to tell. But um, this is hugely inspired by the very classical Bauhaus approach. Um, so I... I actually wanted to take a minute or two or three to talk a little bit about the Bauhaus in general because I think most of you maybe don't know about it, maybe you know about it. Anyways, um, I'm, I'm quickly going to explain what it is. So at the beginning of the uh, 20th century, so about 1919 around, um, there was kind of a German high school uh, or university, I should say, in Weimar, which... Um, yeah, well, they, their biggest task was to combine again the the kind of craftsmanship of people and the the design and approach of art to go into you know architecture in general as an approach of yeah design more than just industrial functionality so it's um, a little bit hard to tell because it, it they didn't start off doing architecture in that kind of way they did start off going into you know the craftsmanship in general again um, just as a contradictory um, development against the ultra high developed in, in that kind of time back then um, industrial kind of idea so they went back and and tried to go deeper into design and art in general back again and they come up with this very clean and simple idea of design which is really back to the basic back to the basic um, resources to use in art but also in architecture and that said it's how they developed this and it was basically and I opened the um, I opened the Wikipedia article just to remember the names because I don't really know all the names but basically the um, basis intention of all this was developed by Henry van der Velde I guess it is and Walter Gropius um, who kind of you know wanted to emancipate um, the whole art from the current development of industrialization and they came up with as I said with the very clean look and feel and um, the the name Bauhaus which was basically the name of the university and studies they had there kind of developed as kind of the description of this kind of really flat modern stylistic uh, architecture but it is not exactly true to talk about this as the Bauhaus style because it's um, as I said, the Bauhaus was intended to be kind of university for arts and, and development in that kind of sense and not for the architecture. But um, the influences, this kind of new approach, or basically it is an old approach, just renewed in a kind of way, um, but it had so big influences in all the kind of stuff that happened afterwards all over the world. And a lot of designers and a lot of architects just grabbed a lot of 
influences from this studies and from this basic idea and yeah put it into their own ways so that's basically why Bauhaus is always really strongly connected to modern style and modern art and modern architecture and I have to say I'm really in love with it because if you look at pictures for example from the really classical Bauhaus uh, things and there's even one big Bauhaus inspired uh, thing on the um, how's it called in English the um, the world show I, I think it's the world show um, let me just quickly get the name of it because otherwise uh, you might not be able to tell what I'm talking about um, because it's it's kind of interesting um, how they developed this kind of building back then oh it's a world exhibition by the way um, in the world exhibition I think it was in the early 30s um, of the 20th century where they they had the very big and broad Bauhaus styled building it was kind of a villa kind of style but really really just with some glass elements a lot of concrete and a lot of this kind of stuff and it looked just simply amazing if you like this kind of modern approach it, it it's really hard to tell that this is from the 30s actually you would believe it is kind of something of the 20 first century buildings um, so it, it's really modern in that kind of sense that it is really simple and down to the basic materials and yeah with that kind of little history background I wanted to go into this kind of architecture for this station as well it, it doesn't necessarily fit the theme in that kind of way that is also something to do with a two-layer system in a way but I thought um, this kind of glued together coaster is a really modern approach and um, it's it's really something that hasn't been seen too often in the game and I wanted to you know also pay a tribute to it um, with having a really modern looking uh, station and also I think it, in general this kind of modern really simplistic it's not essentially futuristic but it's really simple but yet modern and, and kind of interesting looking with all the influences of metal as well as um, steel and as well as some yeah plastic it's not plastic but it's you know like kind of this artificial stuff and also concrete in a way um, that hasn't been done so often in Planet Coaster yet I I kind of remember that Silverette did this in Elementary Gardens um, which I really loved as well so his kind of approach on the modern Main Street was also really nice that said uh, he had a lot more influences than in, in really in, in classical modern um, architecture which is a lot more colorful and a lot more with wood and stuff like that but the basic idea about this was also about the Bauhaus style um, which I think is um, you can see in, in so many modern buildings that there is a lot of influences from from these basic ideas that has have been developed in the early 20th century back then as I said um, but yeah I, I just wanted to, to talk a little bit about that and and now we are working on a little bit of a, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know how to put it in words, but I wanted to make a transfer track. I, I didn't necessarily have an idea how to do this because um, it, it would be really hard over there because we just have this tiny little space where realistically um, the coaster track could be transferred um, and we, we would have this kind of glued together piece um, which is basically in the brake run and I am not too sure if that's really possible but I kind of made this little um, switch track with the little uh, elevation platform over there which then can be dropped down into position so that it can be transferred into this little building of course I wanted to maintain the basic look and feel of the entire area and I hope that I kind of you know nailed it in this kind of sense again I I'm really happy with the outcome to be honest I I didn't actually expect that at the beginning of this build because I <laughs> I just went in and I, I knew that I wanted to do something Bauhaus styled um, which seems to be really easy and if you look at it, it it's looking like a really easy building um, but it's definitely not it's uh, really to go into make it look really simple yet classic yet interesting is not that easy at all because I I also went back a lot of times to to look at the building from different angles which are cut out and I I just removed a few minor parts to maintain the clean look of it 
Um, but I didn't want to, you know, delete too much of it because then you would definitely have the problem that there is something missing in a way. Um, and you also want to keep it as open as possible, but at the same time, you want to have the building shape to it. Uh, so, yeah, as you can tell from this a little bit confusing explanation, it's it's not that easy as it looks like. But yeah, um, after having the basic layout done, I went into making the queue line a little bit more interesting and a little more finished. So these um, little fences around there, I just left in to to get an idea where the, the pathway has to be in and also making a blueprint out of it later on. Uh, you guys also have to know where the pass will be fit in. So I left it in there and later on we're gonna remove the railing again from the pathway. But yeah, until this point in time, it's, it's always helpful to maintain the railing on the ground floor because then you can always tell where the pass is going along but at the same time you can already have the texture on the bottom part. So that's that was basically the bottom and ground part. If you merged it into one, it would be the grodden. No, nah, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, uh, yeah, talking a little bit too quick. And as I said in the last episode of Clean Canyon, I wanted to take a minute to think a little bit more about what I wanted to say. So it's always important to make breaks as well, I guess. So nevertheless, I want to keep on doing the little explanation about this area. As you can see now, I am going into some minor details um, because a little bit more close to the station, I forgot some details to make it really finished. And as you can see, I maintained the simple look of it. I just made this little uh, kind of cover for the stairs and copied it around. Uh, same goes for this little uh, medium-sized wall in front of it. And I wanted to just bring in a little bit of a modern um, element at the beginning, which is a little bit more for the view finding of, of the guests. So um, next to it, I wanted to also have a modern kind of sculpture, which I am really happy with in the end, I have to say. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's hugely inspired by some modern art uh, sculptures that don't necessarily have any meaning, but um, I I'm pretty sure they have a meaning, but I won't be able to tell this from the very beginning. Um, that said, I'm just experimenting a little bit with those pieces over here, as you can see, and wanted to, yeah, create that little thing. And I thought, okay, why not put those two ball or a spheres in the middle um, to have kind of the resembling of those two coasters in the middle of this modern sculpture? I, I just tried to bring it in because I thought it was interesting. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with how it looks. But yeah, then again, I, I figured that something is still missing in and so I went in again and made this little um, roof kind of thing, which um, is also, again, something really modern looking with a lot of steel and having those little beams in between. Um, it definitely could be even more interesting if we would have glass in the middle, but <laughs> since we don't have, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of uh, faking it here by by doing it um, just with those little railing pieces as uh, roof pieces and so we just have to imagine that there would be uh, glass in between. Anyways, I am quite pleased with how it turned out in the end because I always try also to um, keep an eye on the shadows and um, it's really interesting to um, use this kind of railings and all these pieces which do cast the shadow really interesting in a, in a really interesting way. So the entire building is really interesting to look at when the sun is moving uh, because it's definitely a, a very um, good idea to always have, so have some open spaces so that the shadow is creating some more interesting looking um, geometric uh, faces on the ground. So I yeah just basically wanted to uh, see how I can play with that as well. And as you can see here, I wanted to get in with a little bit of greenery and foliage. Uh, not too heavy, actually. Uh, just here and there, a little bit of greenish stuff um, to, to make it look a little bit more natural and interesting. And then, then I came up with this little water wall over here, which is uh, basically... I wanted to do that for quite a long time. And I, I figured that it could be nice doing it like that. Mm, I also tried to do this with... Uh, uh, billboard, but I didn't found a good texture to be honest, so I made it just that way. Um, I think it, it works quite well, even though I wanted to create it with one billboard to not use too many VFX, but yeah. 
So here we are using a lot of VFX again. I'm quite sorry, but yeah, there's nothing to do about that. So we have to deal with it. Anyways, um, as uh, some final touches for it, I, I made some backstage areas as well, imagining that the um, path towards the um, maintaining area in the background and the switch track um, can be reached by this very point over here. So we have this backyard door or kind of backstage door over there and then you would get into a tunnel system leading you um, below the brake run and just leading into the little transfer building. So that's basically it. And then I tried to make this little door over here and I have to say I'm quite happy with the outcome. I am willing to say that this is actually one of the uh, nicest little details I have tried in the last couple of weeks because uh, the last couple of weeks were more about bigger buildings in general but yeah I always like to I, I always like to go back to little details like that and so yeah in the end I, I kind of like this little door over there uh, which is basically you know just a little detail but I like how it turned out just putting some um, props over there and um, using the colors again from the coaster to bring in a tiny little bit of color. I think it's always helpful to have some color details um, or highlights in this kind of sense. And yeah, just redoing the entrance a tiny little bit. Um, this is something, unfortunately, we can't save the blueprints with pass. So if you want to grab this later on and after the cinematic video, I will be uploading uh, this blueprint into the workshop and I'm not quite sure how easy it is to put in the pass. I kind of tried to keep an eye on keeping it on the grid, so it's it's not free formed. It's always an angle snap turned on, so it should be easy to put in the pass in the areas I um, reserve for that. But yeah, in the end, it's a little bit tricky because of the entrance way over here because you have to place those. Um, entrance booth exactly that way that they fit into the pillars I made and later on I figured that could be a, yeah maybe a problem because it's um, it, it depends on how you did the pathway in front of it so that might be a little problem I'm not too sure about that but yeah let's see how it works I will put this one in another park as well and try what I can do about this uh, but anyways, that's just a little side note. Yeah, then as I said at the beginning, uh, the name is Grindy Glue, so I wanted to create an entrance sign of it, and um, yeah, I I had some major issues building this because I I needed to find uh, find the r right piece. I didn't want to do a billboard because billboard would also be again. Um, f yeah, an additional work for you to download uh, the JPEG file or whatever. So I wanted to do it with the in-game pieces and I also wanted to keep an eye on not using the um, Halloween pieces and I think I didn't do. I'm not too sure actually, but I think I didn't do. So um, also this will be available for those of you who don't have the update uh, because I'm not quite sure it is. Um, you can use the blueprints, but you can't save the park then as far as I know, so as a little service I try to not use it. But this uh, should be it, guys, for this episode from my side. Um, there's just a tiny little bit of detailing and some um, yeah, custom support work at the very last seconds of this episode. And yeah, that should be it with the little hamburger side project, because next up will be again, or already, the cinematic video of it. So see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye guys.